We rise for the recitation of the three treasures by Gilbert and Fruit. It can be found on page 91. Born into human life. Now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the teachings of the Blessed One. Now we hear it. If we do not deliver ourselves in the present life, no hope is there that we shall be freed from suffering and sorrow in the ocean of birth and death. Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in Buddha. May we all together absorb into ourselves the principle of real and enlightenment and awaken in ourselves the supreme world. I take refuge in Dharma. May we all together be submerged in the depths of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in Samba. May we all together become unit in spirit of four, in your life of harmony, in the spirit of universal brotherhood, free from the bondage of selfishness. Even through ages of myriads of kalpas, part of it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and repeat it. Let's thoroughly understand the true meaning of the Prophet of the Truth. Namo 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 Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day. Um, today's uh, Dharma talk is dedicated to all of the amazing mothers and mothers of faith. And I just want to thank you all for sharing your wisdom and compassion every day. Um, for today's talk, uh, first, I'm going to define mother and mother figures, and then I will share a little bit about my mom and some of my mother figures. And I'm also going to tie in this year's uh, Dharma School theme, which is, I don't see that many Dharma School students here, but what is our theme this year? Does anyone want to share with us our theme? Anybody? Okay, well, I'll share it with you. <laughs> it's I squared equals impermanence times interdependence. And so I know those are big words. We've been talking about them all year long, so um, I'm going to tie that in with this talk. <coughs> okay. okay, so on the next slide, um, here, I just pulled up some different um, definitions of mother. And, um, oh, wait, there we go. Okay. Uh, so you can see there's many def definitions of mother. Um, you know, we have the female parent of an animal or plant, or um, it can also be a verb to act as a mother, um, as in like nourishing and protecting somebody or something. Um, sometimes it's used as a title for a woman represented for her wisdom and age. And sometimes we use it kind of as a source or origin like Mother Earth. Um, so today um, is a day to be grateful and to honor all of the important women in our lives. Um, it could be your mom, your grandmother, 
a mentor, um, even your best friend. And these women are your mother figures, I like to call them, who really nurture, guide, comfort, support, encourage, teach, and um, protect you throughout your life. And these people, these are people who have helped you um, become who you are and who have stepped in to help you um, whenever, whenever you needed it. So on the next slide, um, here's a picture of some important women in my life. So on the, on the left, that's my sister Katie, and, and, then, and then that's me. <laughs> and then my grandma, my grandma Kimie, that's my mom's mom, and then my mom. And they, they really um, have supported me in, in many different ways. And I just, I want to start out by talking about my grandma Kimie. Um, she, she is the reason why I'm here today, actually. Um, she is a very wise and um, very independent woman. And um, when my grandma passed away, my grandpa passed away before I was born. So my grandma lived um, by herself until she was 95 years old. And she, she enjoyed growing um, her own vegetables and fruit in her backyard. She, and she loved to cook them. She enjoyed teaching my sister and I how to cook. Um, all kinds of food. Um, I have really great memories of her um, teaching us how to make sushi and tamales every year. Um, and she also taught me a lot about the Japanese culture. I'm fourth generation Japanese. Um, I don't speak Japanese. Uh, my parents don't really speak Japanese. Um, but she does. She did, my grandma. And, and she also taught me about um, Buddhism. And she'd always encourage me to come to the Buddhist temple. And uh, she did. We did go to Japan together a few times. And when I lived in Japan, she came and lived with me for a month and helped me um, when I was there teaching English in Funabashi. And then after returning from Japan, uh, my grandma Kimie gave me like a stack of kaihos, and <laughs> she told me to read them. And she encouraged me to attend the Buddhist temple. Um, and so, really, that that's really why I'm here today. Um, after sh after attending her funeral that was uh, that was here at the Buddhist temple um, I realized that I, I really enjoyed um, Kenji sensei's talks and and what he said and I just enjoyed being in, in here it was just very comforting um, so uh, and and now now that I'm here I just want to say I just really enjoy all the wonderful people that I've met and all the fun activities um, that are planned, and um, I continue to learn about the Japanese culture, and and I, I really enjoy learning about all of the Buddhist teachings. I didn't grow up Buddhist, so this is really new to me. Um, so my grandma Kimie lived until she was 98 years old, and although she's n no longer with us, I really feel fortunate to have been able to spend lots of time with her, and um, and truly learn from from her. <coughs> And, and she taught me a lot. So I, it is my hope that I will be able to pass on some of the things that she has taught me to, to my son, Mateo, and to my niece and my nephews and, and friends. Because again, like I said, she was a very wise woman. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. And on this slide, um, I wanted to ask if any students were here, but I don't see that many. But um, go, you could go ahead and click, Bill. OK. So. Imp I talked about the Dharma School theme, I squared equals impermanence times interdependence. And these are uh, big words. And so um, we've been talking about these words and their meanings like throughout this year of Dharma School. And so um, impermanence really is, it's, it's about change. So things change. And um, so I just wanted to point out um, that even though my grandmother has moved on to her next life, and although I wish she was, she was still here, I understand that change is part of life, and that's what this is an example of, of impermanence. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Um, so I just shared a little bit about my grandma Kimie, my mom's mom, and so now I'm going to tell you a little bit about my mom Shirley. And you, perfect. Um, so. Um, today I wrote an acrostic poem that describes my mom. And an acrostic poem is um, a poem in which the first letter um, of each line spells out a word or a, a phrase or a message about that person or thing. 
And so my mom's name is Shirley. And so um, she is super supportive. Whenever I need her, she is there. Um, she has taught my sister, brother, and me um, the importance of hard work. I would say we're all pretty, we're all hard workers. <laughs> um, she really enjoys cooking and baking. Um, and she, she cooks for me pretty much every day. <laughs> because I'm very busy and I work a lot, so I really appreciate that. Um, she's very reliable and loyal. Um, she exercises a lot. Um, like I said, her dad passed away. Um, he had a heart attack when he was about 50 years old. And so she really tries to stay healthy um, by exercising um, every day. She does Pilates. She plays pickleball. She walks, and she does classes at the YMC. I think she exercises every single day. Um, something I need to do. <laughs> um, but I just I just really appreciate um, everything that she has taught me. Um, and it is my hope to pass, again, pass on her wisdom and compassion to my son, Mateo, and, and any others, you know, friends, my niece, nephew. Um, and I definitely rely on my mom to help me a lot. But she also relies on me for things, too. So we always help each other, you know, when, when needed. Um, so who remembers that word that um, that makes up part of our Dharma school theme? That kind that means like you're dependent on one another. Does anyone remember that word? You can just say it if you want. Interdependent. So we can go to the next slide. So that's um. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. You can go to the, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So um. So. My mom takes care of my son, Mateo, and our dog, Leroy. She picks him up every single day from our house and takes him to her house. And then on my way home from work, I pick them up, home, I pick them up and take them home. She cooks for us every night, pretty much. <laughs> um, uh, but I also help my mom um, she, with the computer and phone, because I know with that's a, a new learning for her and my dad. So I'm, I'm constantly, she's like, how do I do this? Or how do I do that? Or help me set up this phone, you know. Um, so I, I feel like I'm always, which, which is great. And just anything that she needs, she'll call me and say, oh, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Or So we're just always, I talk to her every single day, like multiple times a day probably. Um, so I want to ask all of you, um, what is one way your mom or maybe a mother figure has helped you today or yesterday? And just um, turn, well, for, for the kids, or if your mom is here, or if you're sitting next to someone, you could tell them um, maybe something your mom helped you with or a mother figure helped you with today or yesterday. So go ahead and do that right now just to someone next to you. If you're a student, you could say thank you. And does someone want to share um, one way your mom has helped you or a mother figure has helped you? Does someone want to share an example? Anybody? No? Okay. Um, that's okay. Well, so then now I want the moms to think about something your child or someone has helped you with and tell them thank you. Does someone want to share something your your child or somebody has helped you with today or yesterday? Anybody? Yes, of course. <laughs> Her, her fur babies help her take a walk every day. Oh, I love that. Cat, dog? Oh, dogs. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, so anyway, you know, we should be grateful for our, our mom every day. Um, they care for us. And um, 
I, I, I really appreciate my mom and everything she does for me and, and my family. So we will move on. Um, so I found this quote, and um, like I said in the beginning, um, today is a day I, I feel like, um, not only to recognize your mom because maybe your mom has passed away, like my grandma or, you know, other people who have helped support you. So um, I found this quote. It says, you are born to one mother, but if you are lucky, you will have more than one. And among them all, you will find most of what you need. So um, I have several mother figures to be grateful for, day, for today, too, as, as, as well as many of you might, too. So you can go to the next slide. And here are some of the people um, that are in my life that, that I rely on. Um, that first picture on the upper left, that's my friend Julie. I've known her since I've been three years old. I still talk to her today, and you know she's just that person. She knows me, and I know her. Um, the next person is Jennifer, and she I've known her for over 20 years as well. We started teaching together, and she was my roommate. And then, um, so again, same thing. We know each other very well. Um, that middle picture is actually my mother-in-law, so Mateo's um, grandma, and uh, we're really close too, and my mom. So they were at together at something at Mateo's school, and um, she's super supportive. And the next one is my friend Cindy with her dog, and I've known her since college. And then that last picture is uh, my friend Claire, and some of you might know her. I met her here at the Buddhist temple. And we've become really good friends, and she actually, um, I adopted uh, her Frenchie bulldog in that picture. So um, so she's, she still sees him to this day because we're friends. So um, <coughs> anyway, I just wanted to recognize those people, those other women in our lives who really help us and support us in addition to our biological mothers. Um, and again, that, that shows, um, you know, that relationship that, that you have with these people um, that is, um, and being like dependent on each other for things, could be different things, um, is interdependence. And just to end, um, so in the paper the other day, there was, um, Someone, this guy, Jeff Minnick, he interviewed some women and he asked them, you know, what is the best thing about Mother's Day or what would you want for Mother's Day? And what he said was um, really kind of resonated with me. He said, on this special day, we can bring our mothers flowers and fancy cards, treat them to lunch and even buy them extravagant gifts. All of these gestures express our love for them and for what they did. But after speaking with these women, I believe the greatest gifts we can offer our mothers are words of gratitude from the heart and passing along their lessons to our children. So um, just, uh, just please be grateful for your mom and your mother figures every day and think about what lessons um, they have taught you and teach them to your friends or loved ones or, or your children. Thank you. Namo Mirabutsu, Namo Mirabutsu, Namo Mirabutsu, Namo Mirabutsu. Thank you, uh, Lisa, for your Dharma School message about the significance of the word mother. And thank you for sharing uh, those stories about the mother figures in your life. Thank you so much. At this time, we'll be reciting our pledge. Um, we will be led by Juliana. And you can, um, you can read the, our pledge. At the, you can find it at the back of the service book or on the screen. Our pledge, breaking out of my shell, I will share a warm smile and speak gentle words, just like the kind Buddha. Not becoming lost in my greed, anger, and ignorance, I shall think and act with an open mind, just like the calm and peaceful Buddha. Not putting myself first, I will share in the joy and sadness of others, 
just like the compassionate Buddha. Realizing the gifts of life I have received, I shall strive to live each day to its fullest, like the Buddha who tirelessly works to liberate all. Namoi Dabsu, Namoi Dabsu, Namoi. Thank you, Juliana. Um, do, uh, do we have any announcements? I will start off um, with the uh, Ukrainian donation drive. I would like to thank everyone who supported uh, the U Ukrainian donation drive last month. We received uh, more than $300 in monetary donations which will be forwarded to the BCA's uh, social, welfare fund, social Welfare Fund, and then on to UNICEF's Ukraine Relief Fund. We also received in-kind donations and recently made a delivery at the, the House of Ukraine over at Bobo, Bobo Park. We um, donated Tylenol, Theraflu bandages, cold weather, military jackets, some boots, uh, belts, and gloves. Uh, so I wish to uh, thank you uh, so much for your support. Hi. Okay, so on behalf of the Junior YVA, thank you to all the people that came out for our Mother's Day breakfast. Um, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and mother figures. Um, thank you again and have a nice day. <laughs> Good morning. On behalf of the Taiko group, I wanted to invite anyone who's interested in learning how to drum to a beginner's workshop that we'll be hosting next Sunday after the Gotane service from 12.30 to 2 in the Annex Hall. If you have any questions, um, Bill has posted information on our website, but also reach out to me and you can come and join and anyone who wants to learn how to play Taiko. Thank you. I just want to remind everybody about the Dharma School camping trip that's coming up on May 27th through the 29th. Um, we, we can't open it up. Um, we have a few families, but we can open it up to some people from the temple. If you're interested, just let me know. Um, thank you. Hi, I'm Bill, uh, and I realize that the other speakers are so modest they never say who they were, but um, uh, on, Taiko, on behalf of Taiko, it was uh, Cheryl Koga. Uh, uh, the junior YBA uh, student was uh, Cassidy. And um, the last speaker, I, I, you may have got her name before, but that's our Dharma School Superintendent, Lisa. So thank you to, you to all of those. And I just wanted to let folks know that uh, some of you may be here for the first time. Uh, if you are, welcome. We really appreciate you joining with us for this lovely day. And uh, Laverne Imori Sensei uh, will stay afterwards to answer any questions, uh, if you have them, uh, about uh, our particular approach to Buddhism and what you may have seen today. There may be one or two people who are uh, taking classes and will need to go ahead and write up their visit. So we want to make sure you have the information so you get that A. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm Luann, one of the co-chairs of the Bazaar, which is coming up in June, uh, June 5th. And we're looking for volunteers. And let me know if you'd like to uh, help us that day and, and the days before. And also, I can give you the link to sign up. And um, we have postcards. Uh, so if anybody needs any postcards to, to give to your friends, we have them in the back. Thank you. Please rise for the recitation of the Golden Chain, which can be found on page 90, and Paulina will be leading us. I am a link in Amita's Golden Chain of Love that stretches around the world. I will keep my link bright and strong 
I will be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will think pure and beautiful thoughts, say pure and beautiful words, and do pure and beautiful deeds. May every link in Amida's golden chain of love be bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Idabutsu. Namo Idabutsu. Now we will be uh, chanting the Gatha Farewell, which can be found on page 107, and we will be guided by Robert Yamamoto on guitar. Now we will be chanting Vandana and Pisarana, which can be found on page 96. We will be led by Laverne Asente, and please join us uh, from the beginning.
Now we will have a Dharma message by Lorenzo Sensei. Good morning, everybody. Can, oh, is this on? Is this on? Now it's on. Good morning. So, my heart this morning is full. It's full because of many things. It's full because I'm standing up here and I'm seeing all of your faces. And I am filled with gratitude. I'm thought about trying to name some names, um, but there are too many and I'm afraid I'm gonna miss somebody. But um, <clears throat> as I am known to do, I'm a wonderfully great procrastinator. And so I thought a couple of weeks ago, I had a lot of time to put together this day, this Mother's Day service and to help with the Mother's Day breakfast. But um, <clears throat> life just got the better of me. And so I ended up reaching out to many, many people very, very last minute. In fact, uh, I reached out to some people yesterday. Everybody has stepped up. Everybody has participated and made this a wonderful day. I would like to also mention um, my heart is filled because it's a bit nostalgic. Um, we have, in the two years that we have been shut down, we have lost many of our longtime members, some very recently. Uh, we lost some members within the last two years. We were unable to get together for uh, formal funeral services, but um, the temple is opening up, and so we've been able to have one-year memorial services. And that, again, I'm very grateful to be able to um, have those services, to see our Sangha members, to get together to hear the Dharma. Um, so a little bit of a mix up because of, again, my procrastination and lack of communication, excuse me, I'll take this off. Um, so Dr. Ume Kubo and I, um, I thought she was doing the adult Dharma talk. So I prepared a children's Dharma talk. And as you know, um, just as Shakyamuni loved to share the Dharma through stories, um, I like to share children's books. And so I had this, I found this great book for today. And that was gonna be, my, that is gonna be my Dharma talk. But in the meantime, I also was very fortunate this morning to have a Dharma Nembutsu experience. And I was reminded of Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion. Um, I was gonna get up very early. I set my alarm for 5.30 and six. I have two alarms every morning. Um, because the first one is sort of, okay, warning, warning, you got half an hour. And then the second one is, get out of bed, you know. Um, this morning, my, um, my intentions were great, but my body said, no, I'm too tired, I don't want to get out of bed. So I had a bit of a late start, and I forgot that today, this morning, I needed to prepare the obukpa. And the ubukpang is the offering of grain. And in our case, we typically will do rice. Um, but I had, you know, cooked the rice last night. I have one of those automatic rice cookers, right, that keeps the rice warm. So I set it last night. It was all cooked and ready to go. But um, I got all my things ready, and I went downstairs. And guess what? The ubukpang was not ready. And so I had told... Um, the junior YBA, I was going to try to be here early. I was going to try to be here at 7.30 and set everything, set my things up, and then be first in line for the Mother's Day breakfast. Well, they had already started. So that, but I wanted to share with you that I was reminded, because of Amida's wisdom and compassion, 
I was reminded to slow things down a tad bit, to really be mindful of my day, of my time, the precious moments of my time. And so because I believe of Amida's wisdom and compassion, the lesson that I learned this morning was, again, to be mindful. So I have two bowls that I use to prepare the obukbang. The obukbang is the rice offering. And we have um, three bukbang ki. These are what we put the obukbang in. And so you'll notice I mold the rice in one of the bowls and then it fits very nicely, right? What I want you to notice is that this morning I was not so mindful. See the difference? See the difference? It was because I was in such a rush that I forgot to mold it in the bowl. I molded it in this. And so, of course, you know, this is shallower. My bowl is much deeper, rounder, or more pointy, I guess. And so I got this ready, I put it in, I thought, wow, you know, I just remember my bukbang being a little bit taller. And then it dawned on me. So this one is molded in the bowl. Different, right? So I told myself, ah, Amida's wisdom and compassion surrounds me. I just need to take a deep breath I just need to be aware of the wisdom and the compassion that surrounds me always. I just need to open my eyes. I just need to open my ears and be aware of that wisdom and compassion. So that was my lesson this morning of Amida's being with me at all times. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and the children are at Dharma school now, but I'm going to go ahead and share my story because I love it. I think that it's as much for us as adults as it is for the children. And some of you, um, so one thing you'll also learn about me is I used to think I was a great multitasker, but I'm not. So let me log into my lab. Okay, so I can't quite see the slides, but I can read this book, and I know the words are going to be um, pretty small, especially for those of you that love sitting in the back row. So maybe you'll think about moving up a little closer so you can see the pictures and read next time. And you know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so, okay, so this book, many of you might have already um, read it yourselves and shared it with your children or grandchildren. It's called On the Night You Were Born. And um, actually I had, a, again, you know, for me, um, the stories that you all share with me, um, uh, Cassidy was one of our speakers. She's one of our junior Y members. And um, her adopted grandma, Nikki, uh, shared with me that when Cassidy was born, uh, Ken, Cassidy's dad, called her and said, oh, the baby is born, and so Nikki went to the hospital, and Cassidy was in an incubator. And uh, wasn't supposed to be taken out of the incubator, but Ken insisted to the nurse that, no, this is her grandma, so please take her out of the incubator. And Nikki said that she was able to hold Cassidy in one hand. That's how tiny Cassidy was, and now look at this um, very precocious and very confident young woman. So this book is On the Night You Were Born. It's by Nancy Tillman. So next, next slide. On the night you were born, the moon smiled with such wonder that the stars peeked in to see you and the night wind whispered, life will never be the same. Because there had never been anyone like you ever in the world. Next slide. So enchanted with you were the wind and the rain that they whispered the sound of your wonderful name. The sound of your name is a magical one. 
but say it out loud before we go on. It sailed through the farmland, high on the breeze, over the ocean, and through the trees. Until everyone heard it and everyone knew of the one and only ever you. Not once had there been such eyes, such a nose, such silly, wiggly, wonderful toes. In fact, I think I'll count to three so you can wiggle your toes for me. When the polar bears heard, they danced until dawn. From faraway places, the geese flew home. The moon stayed up until morning next day. The moon, excuse me, and none of the ladybugs flew away. And I keep forgetting, Bill, too. Okay, you're good. <laughs> All right. I was supposed to say next page, so Bill knew where to follow. So whenever you doubt just how special you are and you wonder who loves you, how much and how far, listen for geese honking high in the sky. They're singing a song to remember you by. Or notice the bears asleep at the zoo. It's because they've been dancing all night just for you. Or drift off to sleep to the sound of the wind. Listen closely, it's whispering your name again. If the moon stays up until morning one day, or a ladybug lands and decides to stay, or a little bird sits at your window a while, it's because they're all hoping to see you smile. For never before in story or rhyme, not even once upon a time has the world ever known a you, my friend, and it never will, not ever again. Heaven, blow, heaven blew every trumpet and played every horn on the wonderful, marvelous night you were born. Please join me in a gush of Namo Medalits, Namo Medalits, Namo Medalits. I like this story because for me, one of the Dharma, one of the most valuable Dharma lessons I think that we can share is one of interdependence and impermanence. Um, and just as Dr. Lisa spoke of interdependence, I look upon all of you and I think about the wonderful uh, friends that I have made in my few years here in San Diego and how much I have come to rely upon you uh, in my own life. Um, and I look upon faces that I don't recognize and hope that the, these will be new relationships um, that we can foster together to support each other. And I also think also about the Dharma lesson of impermanence. Um, and the lesson is, as, as I have often said, you know, we read white ashes at uh, funerals and memorial services, and it sounds rather harsh, it sounds rather jolty, actually, and, and some of the, the words that are shared. However, the, those words, and the Dharma are reminders of impermanence. Nothing stays the same, everything changes. And because nothing stays the same and everything is impermanent, especially our very precious lives, um, it's very, very important for us to be aware and um, embrace, embrace this precious gift of life. And what this story also, I think, one of the importance is, and I think this is an important lesson, um, not just for us, but especially for our children. And that is that each and every one of them, each and every one of you are unique. Take a moment and think about it. Think about the chances, right, of your parents having met. And here you are. Think about their parents, the encounters, how they met, and how they produced your parents. Those encounters, when you really think about it, are very, very precious. They're very, very unique. And for those of you 
that are married or have been married and have children, think about your encounters and the gift of life of, the, of your children. To the mothers out there, you are very special. Um, and you are mothers because of those children. And so because you've brought those children into the world, I think it's very important for you also to share the lessons of the Dharma, to share the lessons of interdependence and impermanence. So thank you for being here today. And thank you to all of, uh, all of you for coming uh, yesterday and even before, stepping up, helping with the Dharma School breakfast, coming to help with the service at the last minute. I send you my love and my gratitude. So please join me in Dash. Namo Amidabits. Namo Amidabits. Namo Amidabits. Namo Amidabits. Namo Amidabits. Namo Amidabits. Thank you for your Thank you for your message, Dharma message, Sensei, on the importance of mindfulness. Thank you for your story and also for reminding us how important it is that we uh, be, be grateful and mindful of the causes and conditions that have brought each of us here uh, this, at this moment. Okay, so at this time, uh, uh, Laverne Sensei will be reading the May Shotsuki name list. So the first, uh, for those of you that are new to um, the Buddhist Temple of San Diego, the first, usually, not always, but usually the first service of the month is what we call our Shotsuki service. And at our Shotsuki service, we read the names of those temple members or families of temple members who died in the month of May. And so I will start with um, some of our most, most recent um, deaths and then um, read the name of the deceased and then the family member. So in April, we lost Mrs. Joyce Terao on April 5th, and she was the mother of our beloved Karen Akahoshi, who was our Okusan. I know she doesn't like to be called Okusan, but of our uh, minister's, previous retired minister's wife. And then also one of our very longtime members, um, um, I think she was the oldest member, temple member at the time of her death, and very much a um, benefactor of this temple, Mrs. Alice Asako Morinaka, who died on April 10th. Mary Koba, Dwayne Koba. Nasuemon Ishizuka, Tachiki family. Tsuneko Masumoto, Bert Masumoto. Kumataro Kimura, Ochi family. Jirosuke Nishiue, Nishiue family. Yasukichi Fujimoto, Fujimoto family. Gohei Tomiyama, Tomiyama family. Fujie Oya, Oya family. Kisayamon Kato, Dennis Otsuji. Yoshimatsu Yagura, Yagura family. Richard A. Jima Jr., A. Jima family. Osamu Amano, Mikie Honda. Moritaka Tsuneyoshi, Miki Tsuneyoshi. Yoshi Morimoto, Morimoto family. Asao Tanaka, Tanaka family. Hiroshi Mayumi, Mayumi family. Tamiko Mamiya, Kawamoto family. Seiko Fujimoto, Fujimoto family. Shoichi Hamatake, Masako Prestige. Magotaro Adachi, Yoshioka family. Tsume Takashima, Wilbur Takashima. Reverend Gikan Nishinaga, Mani Ryan. Mitsuko Iguchi, Iguchi family. Hatsuko Miyamoto, Fumiko Miyamoto. Shizue Saito, Saito family. Kakuya Yamada, Yamada family. Hisayo Fujimoto, Fujimoto family. Kuni Higuchi, Yasuko Higuchi. Carl M. Oka, Valerie and Gerald Payne. Carol James, Etsuko Smith. Hiroko Kitada, Yoshitsugu Kitada. Hisashi Ozaki, Ozaki family. Shizue Koba, Duane Koba. Morizo Fujimoto, Fujimoto family. 
Kazu L. Scott, Lee Scott, Momoyo Amano, Mikie Honda. And I forgot to mention that if you would like to come up, we're not doing Oshoko, or burning of incense, but if you would like to come up and do Gashio uh, in front of the altar, that would be, if you can do so now. Uh, Yoshio, Yoshio Koike, Kikuko Koike, James Yamaguchi, Fusako Yamaguchi, Ichie Ochi, Ochi family, Agnes Masae Kishi, Masao Kishi, Harumi Hokanson, Raymond Hokanson, Mikazu Kaminaka, Kaminaka family, Paul Yoshimasa Naito, Masako Naito, Yukie Yagade, Stephen Yagade, Roy Morinaka, Barry Morinaka, Tamiko Iwashita, Iwashita family, George Higuchi, Yasuko Higuchi, Noboru Yamamoto, Yamamoto family, Sanaya Gutsman, Gutsman family, Matsue Ishino, Hiroko Ishino, Jane Ak Akemi Obayashi, Glenn Obayashi, Katsumi Takashima, Wilbur Takashima, Donald Hamilton Estes, Carol Estes, Misao Nakagawa, Moriyama, Moriyama family, Masako Falk, James F. Falk, Horace Shigeto Koga, Katsuko Koga, Tiffany Wodzinski, Melissa Wodzinski, Phoebe Wodzinski, Melissa Wodzinski, John Ernest Benson, Agnes Benson, Chonja Lee Haruko Bullock, Jack Tetsuyo Bullock, George Masato Uda, Georgiana Uda, Arlene Shizue Hirata, Jason Hirata, William Perkinson Jr., Michiko Perkinson, <clears throat> George Yada, Shinzo Yada, Setsuko Yada, Miyoko Hashiguchi, Jane Kozuye Yagade, Stephen Yagade, Peggy Fumiko Tsurudome, Carly Tsudu Tsurudome, Kuniko Denton, Charles Denton, Leora Chieko Hamada, Gary Hamada, Frederick Ichiro Tsuji, Masako Tsuji, Steve, Steve Tomiyama, Aki Tomiyama, Thank you for allowing us to share the names of those deceased in the month of May. These were the people that supported the temple, supported you, and I think it's very important, again, for us to express gratitude to all of them. Please join me in a gush show. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu. Now we will be chanting Gatha. Andoksan, which can be found on page 128. Um, and again, Robert Yamamoto will be leading us with the guitar. Everybody, please rise. Oh, please rise, I'm sorry.
You may be seated. Please join me in Gasho for a closing meditation. A family is a place where a mind lives with other minds. If these minds love each other, the home will be as beautiful as a flower garden. Namo Amidabha, Namo Amidabha, Namo Amidabha, Namo Amidabha, Namo Amidabha, Namo Amidabha. At this time, I would like to thank Laverne Sensei for officiating this morning service, our MA Yukari Williams for her assistance and for ringing the con show, Robert Yamamoto for playing the guitar, Angie Basham and Shirley Omori for her, uh, their help with the flowers uh, this morning. Bill Teague and Brevin Honda for helping with the technical stuff this morning also. Um, this concludes today's service and I hope you enjoy uh, any Mother's Day gatherings you may have planned for today. Thank you very much, but we still have a uh, Dharma message in Japanese. You are more than welcome to stay if you understand Japanese. Yukari Williams will be giving us a Dharma talk. Thank you to Arturo Rubio for chairing the service too.
何<笑>あ大丈夫ですそれではあの始める前に合唱とお念仏をお願いいたしますえ皆さん母の日おめでとうございます<笑>生阿弥陀仏生阿弥陀仏生阿弥陀仏ありがとうございます、えー、さてえ今日は阿弥陀様のお導き母の導きと題してお話をします。とですね、ある日、私はえうちの旦那さんとえ死んだらどこに行くのかという話をしていました。えまず、うちの旦那さんの名前はえ J と言います。<笑> J って言うんです。えー、そうしたら、えー、J は死んだらゆかりのお母さんが、えー、いるところへ行きたいと言いましたで私はそれを聞いてびっくりしました私の母は、えー、もう亡くなっていますが熱心な浄土真宗の門徒でしたのでえ私のお母さんはお浄土にいます。ということはえ J は死んだらお浄土に行きたいって言っているんです。<笑>え彼はお浄,土お浄土という言葉も知らないしえ浄土真宗の教えも聞いたことがありません、えー、白人のアメリカ人でクリスチャンです、えー、だから、えー、仏教的なことを言っているのではないのでした、えー、ただ、えー、彼は、えー、私の母ととても仲が良かったです、えー、私と J は2006年から2015年まで日本の私の実家で母と一緒に暮らしましたその時父はもう亡くなっていました母は乳がんと肺がんを患っていて手術を何度かししていました私もその頃は日本が少し懐かしくなってきたので彼と日本へ行きましたそれで母は J のことを自分の本当の子供のように思っていましたえ息子と一緒にフットボールをテレビで見ているなど楽しそうに友達やおじに行ってるのをよく聞きました J の方も私の母のことが大好きで本当のお母さんのように思っていましたえだから彼は死んだらお母さんのところに行きたいと思っていたらしいのですがえ私はそれ以外に何かあるような気がするんですえ言葉では表せない何か阿弥陀様のお導きのようなものえ目に見えない強いご縁のようなものが J を阿弥陀様へ導いているような気がしましたこういうふうに何か強いご縁のようなものに導かれていることは時々あるように思います私がこのお寺に来るようになったのもそうだと思います
、えー、私は以前にノースカウンティーに住んでいたのでここに、えー、浄土真宗のお寺があることは知りませんでした、えー、わ私の娘のエリカが、えー、ビスタで、えー、日本語教室に子どもの頃通っていたのでえビスタにお寺があることは知っていました私が日本から帰ってきてえエリカがインターネットでこのお寺のことを知ってぜひ行ってみようということになって初めてこのお寺に来ました本堂に入るまでここのお寺が浄土真宗のお寺であることは知りませんでした。本堂に入って阿弥陀様のお像を見て初めてここが浄土真宗のお寺であると知りましたとてもなじみのある阿弥陀様のお像が本堂に祀られていましたその時何か強いご縁に導かれてこのお寺に来たような感じがしました私が思うに J が死んだらお浄土へ行くという私の母がいるところに行きたいということはいうこととそれから私とエリカが浄土真宗のお寺とは知らずにお参りに来たことこれは阿弥陀様のお導きだと思いますまた母や祖父なども私たちを阿弥陀様に導いてくれるのだなと私はすごく感謝していますえ今日は私の話を聞いてきくださいまして誠にありがとうございました合唱して終わりたいと思いますナマミダブチナマミダブチナマミどうもありがとうございました皆さん来ていただいてありがとうございました終わりです<笑>